folks, Saint Teeth, Years of the Ghost Raiders here. Bank robberies, myth versus reality. Let's do it. Many Western books, films, and television shows would have us believe that bank robberies were a common occurrence in the Wild West. You walk up to the teller, point a gun, and get all the money. Hopefully there's no trouble from the bank employees or the townspeople, and you're right out of town much richer for your effort. Easy peasy, right? Like taking candy from a baby. Morning. Morning. You two couldn't take candy away from a baby without coming out on the short end. The truth is that there weren't that many successful bank robberies in the era we call the Old West. Why? Well, the big problem here is that this wasn't that easy to do. Towns were generally small in size and population, and a gang of outsiders riding in attracted attention. The marshal's office was typically not far from the bank, and unless there was a no-gun ordinance, you couldn't be sure who was armed. Another issue is that banks kept the townspeople's and business owners' money in them, and people got a little protective of their life savings. See, many banks were not protected by the government, but by an uninsured bank owner. So, if your money was stolen, you probably weren't getting it back. In the cases of the James Gang and the Dalton Brothers, the citizens put the kibosh on the gangs attempting to steal their hard-earned money. Banks in these frontier towns also made it very difficult by having safes within double reinforced walls. Some made it even harder for outlaws by nestling themselves tightly between two businesses, limiting their escape route. The idea of blowing the safe was highly unsuccessful. In 1903, Oregon robbers tried for a couple hours and basically destroyed the building and never did get into the safe. Nine years later, Elmer McCurdy would try that in Kansas with the same result. Other notable bank failures are the 1884 Medicine Lodge robbery in Kansas, the 1893 Delta Bank robbery in Colorado, and the 1896 International Bank robbery in Nogales, Arizona. All of these resulted in the gang members getting caught or getting killed. Now, don't get me wrong, wow. there were successes. Uh, I'll show you customer service. Hmm. In 1889, Butch Cassidy and cronies robbed the San Miguel Valley Bank in Telluride and made off with $20,750. In 1891 and 92, the McCarty Gang robbed a couple banks in Oregon and Washington. The James Gang had many successful robberies before the ill-fated Northfield raid. By and large, it was much harder to pull off than robbing a stagecoach or even a store. Yeah, there were far more of those in the Old West than bank heists. We'll go into store robberies in another episode. But the interesting takeaway here is that in almost all these cases, the gangs didn't quit when the going got good. No. They continued on their life of crime, and it eventually spelled their fate. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you on down the trail. In 1889, Butch Cassidy and cronies robbed the San Miguel Value Bank in... <laughs> in 1899, Butch... <laughs> I said Value Bank.